All right, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, Matthew 26, and we're going to be uh, beginning in verse 36, Matthew 26, and beginning in verse 36, the Bible says, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place, a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here. And watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh my father, if it is possible, please please let if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went, uh, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is, is, is betrayed unto the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Behold, he that is at hand that doeth betray me. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. We thank you for your dear word. Lord, it lays before us so easily accessible and we're never thankful enough for it. Uh, we pray for countries that don't have this privilege this morning, uh, that they can't delve into the word of God because of the government in their country. Lord, now we pray that you would honor your word with your spirit. Uh, wake us up as your people. Help us to understand your word better, and we'd be, able, we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, some somewhat familiar verses. Uh, this morning I'll be preaching on satis, uh, satisfying, uh, a satisfying prayer life. <coughs> now, only you can answer that question if your prayer is satisfying to self or not. And I don't mean self-indulgent, that when you are finished with prayer, you felt that you've met with God. Now, the only satisfying prayer that you can have is when you know you've, met, you, you've dealt with God. Uh, anything else and uh, anything and it, it is just words. And, and I dare to say, just like the Catholic Church, Many times what we, pr we pray is just vain repetition. Just the same thing over and over and over again with never really getting a hold of the, thr the throne of grace. Um, you, you, you have to be honest with yourself and think back across the years of your life and how many times do you pray until you know you've gotten a hold of God? Uh, because it is not always a simple task. It is, and it's not a guarantee when we go to him in prayer. Sometimes he meets with us, sometimes he don't. And you know, if we believe he's sovereign, we have to understand and know that's just according to his will. But we should not be easily satisfied with not hearing from him. Uh, if you don't hear from your parents for a few days, you get concerned. Uh, when mother was living, uh, more than once, I called her and called her, and when I would rush to see what was wrong, she'd be in the floor or be hurt or something like that. And so why would we not do justice the other way around? If you don't hear from God, who is the problem always 
with you. It is always with you. Because the Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not, so that means he's always ready. He's always setting on goal. And then the, the, the third thing you have to consider is this, is you always won't get what you want. Prayer is communicating with God, not fulfilling a wish list. Prayer is, uh, not, uh, is not simply uh, something that we go through in route to obtain something that we want. Prayer is to be satisfied. When, when you go to a, to a meal, is it satisfying or not? Um, Donna prepared some of my favorite foods today for my birthday. I know I'll be satisfied from that, but it took a lot of work to get there, right? Um, my favorite food is not easy to prepare. Uh, uh, caramel pie goes good or it goes really, really bad. If you burn your sugar up, you're done. you got to start from scratch. And uh, yesterday, and it always happens this way, when Don tells me to stop at the store, I'm always flat broke. And I, I knew it was coming. Larry, you got any money on you? I go, I got a little. My crux sitting on E. And I said, what do you need? And then she said, well, I need some pie crusts for your cakes. And I felt bad. Uh, and, and so I said, well, I'll try to find it. And then I went all over Clarksville because that's where I was. No pie crust, no pie crust. She told me where to look. I said, there's nothing here like it. Got back to Dover and went to France and he came through for me. And I got home on fumes and a five dollar bill. And so we, she was satisfied. She asked something for me, of me, and she was satisfied. That's the kind of preparation in the meal that took place. And she fried chicken, and she made my other favorite, which is chocolate pie, and went and went and went. But that satisfaction would not have occurred without preparation. Mm -hmm. And your prayer life will never be satisfying. You'll get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. And... We need to be more effective in prayer than we've ever been before. Uh, and, and so we find as the Lord's people much of what we do and it is not effective. And time and time again, we'll find the Lord Jesus Christ, his whole ministry, preaching boys, was outlined by prayer. More than preaching, really, time and time again, what the Lord was known for was his effective prayer life. He went into the mount, uh, the mount and fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and it was all about prayer. And you know what? At the end of that, it wasn't rejoicing. It was then that he was attacked by Satan. See, effective prayer is not a guarantee of a smooth ride either. So either you have it or you don't. Either you're living it or you're living without it. And that, was, that is the situation with effective prayer. And we'll find our Lord Jesus Christ was a man of very, very effective prayer in the sense of his uh, carnality or he took on, the Bible says he took on the form of sinful flesh. Uh, I, I've always felt that that uh, he bore our burden, but it was impossible for him to sin. Now, in verse 36, we'll pick up our text there. Then cometh Jesus with them to a place called Gethsemane. Now, this place they had resorted, I think in the Gospel of uh, Luke, maybe, they had resorted many times thither before, is how the Scripture says in that place. So this was not an unfamiliar place for him or his group. Now, with that, I'll ask you, do you have a place of prayer? Most do not. Whenever they take an ocean, they'll try to pray a little bit. But do you have a place of prayer? Do you have a place that you have where that's where you seek and find God? See, Gethsemane was a place 
they were familiar with, and the Lord Jesus Christ knew, knew that area, and it was an effective place for him to pray. You know, we each should have a place like that, whether it's your kitchen table, uh, your pickup truck, or own, uh, our special room in your house. A place of prayer is very important to the believer. And, and, and Jesus said, uh, excuse me, then cometh Jesus uh then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and say and saith unto him, Sit here while I go and pray yonder. Now, uh, I want you to notice a couple of things. Uh, uh, first, he began to separate down to people he could trust. If, have you ever? And he's going to convey a prayer request in a minute. How many people do you know that have an effective prayer life? How do you know that? Some of the best people I know in the whole world are sitting in this room. And I don't know much about your prayer life. And I've been your pastor for some of you for over 20 years. And really, you don't know much about my prayer life. Very private thing, is it not? But I want you to see that somehow the Lord Jesus Christ, either through his deity or by their example, he knew who to stand with him. Now, he put the nine in one place, or now we're down to eight. He put the eight in one place and took the three a little further. Or are you willing to go further in prayer life than you have right now? Are you willing to draw a little bit closer unto the Lord in order to get the prayer life that you need? Because I would dare to say in the, in the years which we live that, that our prayer lives are not nearly where they need to be. You know, uh, when how Wednesday night services, midweek services really came to be, it, it was an unheard of thing until the Second World War. And when the Second World War broke out, they began to have prayer meeting, not a midweek service, not a service where they would have another realm of preaching and another time of Bible study. They went there to pray for the provision of their people. That's effective prayer. Uh, that is wanting, that is desiring the hand of the protection of God. That's why it was called prayer meeting. You know, uh, you think about yourself. Have you ever really, I've been to a couple been one here that I think that we've got a hold of God just a little bit. But have you ever really been to a real prayer meeting? How do you measure your own prayer? You know what I found through superficial Christians? Most people measure their prayer by effect. Now we'll see the Lord Jesus Christ was going to ask something of God. And he got the opposite. Was his prayer effective? So we find then, I think, we can't measure it that way, can we? If we measure it by results, what did Paul say? For this thing I sought the Lord thrice. And he ended up being blind, nearly blind, the rest of his life. Can we measure prayer by results? I don't think we can, do you? Two of the most godly men, and literally the deity of God in the flesh, did not get what he prayed for. So how are we going to measure prayer? How, how are we going to find out that it's effective? And only you can answer that, but for my, for my own self, I know when I've met with God, and I certainly know when I have. And being honest about that is integral to a good prayer life. Uh, verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Two distinct characteristics. He was sad. Now, I have never ever believed that he was in the, in the point that he... He wanted to avoid the beating or avoid succumbing to death. I believe what he wanted to avoid was that bitter cup. 
That cup that held my sin and your sin and any of the elect that will be redeemed, he did not want to taste it. And why? He had never, ever tasted it before. Now, if you would be uh, honest about your vile, inward man, can you imagine experiencing life without seeing it? And then having to drink it all, the entire realm of the elect, every sin, take that at one time. That is what he was dreading. He wasn't dreading the beating. Probably wasn't looking forward to it, but he wasn't dreading it. He, he, he wasn't upset about the possibility of dying. He knew that that was a necessity, but taking on the sin was very difficult for him. Verse 38, and then he saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. Now, watching, I, I've often wondered, and I'm, I'm at least understanding, at least in part, I think, that was watching for Judas and that band that was coming. But have you ever thought it was just observation? How would you like to see the Lord Jesus pray? I think that would have been amazing, don't you? The very exemplary, ex the very ex most excellent example ever of a praying man and being observant of it. That, that's beyond my fathom. Looking upon Christ while he prayed. You know what? Uh, but I know the flesh, and I probably wouldn't have, but if I'd been there in that ministry, I would hope that I would have sucked it up at every opportunity. But apparently the flesh got in the way. I would love to have seen him pray, wouldn't you? I, I would have loved to see how he got a hold of the Father and how he magnified his Father and how he praised his Father. How he went out to a, a mountain park to pray and prayed up a storm to take down the people that he loved. That's amazing, is it not? Effective prayer. And, and so we find that the Lord Jesus Christ being the very example of that, he asked a very simple thing. He says, watch, tarry here, abide with me, watch, tarry you here. Just watch. Verse 39, and he went a little farther. Now, so now we have three groups, if you will. We have the mediocre eight, we have the dedicated three, and we have the Lord Jesus Christ out praying before the Lord. Uh, now we'll see in a moment, he prayed for an hour. Have you ever thought what has transpired in the last hour that you lived? We heard Adam teach. So that 11.35 now, but don't get excited. I didn't start until 11.20, so I looked. Adam was teaching. We hope we were attentively listening, and we were hopefully praying. You ever thought about other people an hour ago? Sitting in Shawnee's eating breakfast? Popping their first beer for the day? And chug a lug. One hour in the life of a person. It's gone like that, right? You look around and it's gone again. Have you ever prayed for an hour? Only you can answer that. I'll have to say no. I know I haven't been, been on point. I don't think I have, period. But I know that I haven't and been on point. But we find the Lord Jesus Christ, the very example that we would desire to be, he prays for an hour, and that's a routine thing, apparently. And if you remember the night that they were in the, in the middle of the Nazareth, and he walked to them on the sea, at that moment, he'd been praying for hours. Because it said that he went up to the mount to pray, and in the fourth watch of the night, he went unto them walking on the sea. 
The fourth watch is just before daylight. You ever prayed that one? You ever wonder how the Lord Jesus did that? I don't think it was just because he was a deity. I believe he was determined not to get up until he heard from God. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that that's exactly where our prayer life ought to be, that we're not satisfied with the mediocre. We're not satisfied with the routine. We're not satisfied with going through the motion. But you know, we are, we are, we are. And then we wonder why the Spirit don't come down and help us. We're satisfied with the mediocre. This evening, we go down, take our new meal together. I don't know what everybody brought. I know my mother-in-law bought mashed potatoes. Saw that, I love them. But what are you going to select? You know, if I, if I wasn't a Southern gentleman, I'd run the caramel pie first. Because I, I, I love it. And it, it, it's satisfying. But, because I am a Southern gentleman, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until the time is appropriate. And then I'm going to go get some. That wait will be hard, will it not? That wait will be difficult. Prayer sometimes is a waiting game. Wait till you hear from God. Wait till He speaks to you. It's very, very important that uh, an understanding prayer is that it's a patient work. It's a work that takes time. And, and dear friend, probably the hardest for human flesh, it's effort. You ever think how we can put effort into everything else and not put much effort into prayer? That we can put effort into our work, we can put energy and hours and time, but prayer is not so much so. That, that, that it becomes the mediocre, that it becomes the routine when it is a very gift of the Almighty. Rest of verse 39, very simplistic. Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now, how long did it say? One hour. That prayer is 21 words long. One hour. What about you? What do you think? Now, what did that take me to recite that? Three seconds? Four seconds, maybe? What do you reckon he was doing the rest of the time? You know what? When I go on to God, what I want? I want an answer. And I don't think the Almighty was much different than us, do you? So you know what the other 59 minutes and... 56 seconds was about waiting. Waiting. How good are you at that? Now, at least twice a week, Bella will run into the kitchen and she'll put popcorn in the microwave. One minute. And even before that, she's standing staring into the microwave. You know why? We're an impatient people, right? An instantaneous day where everything is at our fingertips. You know, uh, when, when the Lord first called me into the ministry, I still have it because it was a, a birthday gift, and I don't even know how many years ago now, but it was from Don and the kids. They got me a true strong concordance, about 1,500 pages long. And used to, for the verse that I wanted, I had to thumb through that thing before I could do this. It would take 15, 20 minutes sometimes to find the verse that was up here. You know, that's waiting, is it not? 
We have everything at our fingertips. And so that makes prayer, I think, even more of a challenge today than it was when I was 27 years old. I think it makes more of a challenge today than it was 50 years ago. But you know what? Those people 50 and 100 years ago understood more about prayer than we do. Now, uh, younger members don't remember this. Uh, people that attend, uh, probably these days, it's just me and Junior and Diane. But Miss Ela, and I don't even know what her last name is. Ezel? I think, I, I don't remember her last name, but Ela, Linda's mama, I can say that, Linda Marcus's mother. I didn't know this two years after she was dead, and I want to say either Linda or Emily one told me this. That every day at 12 o'clock, and uh, Bumpeth Mill was not a head covering church. I never even heard of that. She would get a head covering, go into the bedroom, and spend an hour on her knees before God, praying for her family, praying for her husband, praying for people she knew, praying for the church of Bumpeth Mill. An hour. And you know what? She didn't cut it short. She went before God. She committed that hour. And you know, you know what 12 is for me? That's lunchtime. When I was a boy, it was dinner. You didn't have lunch, you had dinner and supper, right? Uh, I don't like to give my lunch up. I'm not a big breakfast eater anymore. And so by lunchtime, I'm hungry. But she gave it up. What do, you, what do you give up to go before the throne of grace? What do you contribute to your prayer life? How, how effective is it? And how do you measure what, what, what has happened? And so we find that it is a time-given process, and it's more listening than talking. That's what we see from verse 39. Verse 40. And cometh unto the disciples after this hour, and findeth them asleep. You think it's a sleepy day, but me and Brother Eric was talking about this, and, uh, uh, and seemingly, the Lord's day, everybody wants to sleep. I told you on the last night before I went to bed, because I still had some jet lag, and I worked three midnights this week. And I said, Donna, if I'm not up by seven, you get me up. Eric overslept this morning. I wasn't upset with him because I can identify. See, uh, don't get down on the on the three because you would have been among them. What wasn't being done? What do you ask him to do? Watch. You know why he did that? He wasn't testing them. He knew exactly what they do. He wanted them to watch while he prayed. You ever watch somebody else pray? Now, I'm not sure where this uh, comes from, and you younger boys can help me, and, and I understand the reverence involved if we need it, but we close our eyes before prayer. Apparently, that's not what Jesus wanted them to do because he said, watch. Now, you close your eyes, does it hinder watching? It does for me. I can't see a thing through my eyelids. So, do we, is that just a thing we do? Or is it visible? I, I, I don't know. But he caught them doing what they were not supposed to. To do. Now, I've been working a lot of midnights uh, this week, and I know my mother-in-law has done that in years past, and, and I don't do well with them. So, what I, this is my best medicine when, when I'm working midnights. When I get real sleepy, I get up and walk. That keeps me going. That keeps my mind sharp, and it, it keeps me from the yawns, and it keeps me from, from drifting off. I move about, I look. You know what, that's a good watch. Paul, who goes there? That's a watch. 
He's not just looking about and seeing what's going on. He's protecting what? Your time of prayer. It's protecting what Christ was doing. And it was also being obedient. That, that, that's the key. And, and so he finds them asleep and not doing what he requested, not doing what he commanded. And he was upset just a little bit. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Now you think about it. I'm just postulating. You say this tiny 21 word prayer, and that's counting every word, the it's and, and the is's and, and everything that made it up. And then just wait. You know what? When I sit still for an hour at 53 years old, I get sleepy. Don't you? Well, mm -hmm. you were young. Yeah, I knew Brother Junior would help me out. I get sleepy. Sister Diane was telling me the other day, they kick back in the recliners with the intent of watching the news, and boom, they're asleep. You have to move about. If you're going to hear from God, you've got to be attentive. Now, if you, if you look down through the years when God spoke to his people, the audible voice was rare. It wasn't an everyday occurrence. Now, it did happen, but it wasn't an everyday thing. And, and I personally believe we're out of that dispensation. I don't think you will ever hear God speak until he says, it's enough, come up here. And then you're going to hear him speak. Then, then you're going to hear him declare the new age. Then he's going to whisk us home according to the mercy and grace of God. That is forthcoming. But until then, wait. He took a request to God and he waited. So we also see from this effective prayer that there's nothing wrong with asking something of God. Now, we, we've taught, I, I, I've preached and preached and preached down through the years how we're to be salutary in praying, giving salutations, giving praise, glory to Him in the highest. But the harder part is to wait, to be patient. You ever been through a sermon and you thought, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Look at you were getting that drifty feeling. We, 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 need, we need to be deliberate. When we're in our prayer time, listen as actively as you speak. And so for this 59 minutes and 57 seconds, he waited after this very short prayer. He comes back, <laughs> they're asleep on the, on the ground. How would you have taken that as a pastor? If you were the pastor, and that was what he was, he was the model pastor, he was the chief pastor, and he asked something very small of them, and he comes back and he finds them asleep. In addition to being asleep and disinterested and not praying, he didn't even, they didn't even do what he asked. Yeah. And, and, and so we find that many times we are in the same boat with, with, with the close three. And you know, the Bible doesn't even mention what the other eight were doing. I've often wondered. I've wondered what they were doing if the best of the best had kicked out and went to sleep. And so we find that the Lord Jesus Christ had some disappointment. You know what we would have done here? First of all, we defy the handle, right? He makes a simple question. Could you not watch with me for one hour? Now, ultimately, what was the only answer, the only honest answer that could be to this question? No. Right? They went to sleep, so they couldn't watch. They, could, they couldn't hold guard. They couldn't stand true, not even for an hour. Now, you answer this for yourself. How 
is your prayer line. Now, in a few minutes, we go down and we have some chicken and caramel pie and chocolate pie, whatever else they threw together. There's something that uh, Sister Abigail gave me all wrapped up. And I said, I guess I ought to share it, share it with everybody else, and she told me not to. <laughs> so I'm thinking about taking it to work tomorrow. <laughs> That waiting is going to be hard. I, I want to, it's all wrapped up. You know, give it a little shake and stuff. You know why that is? Is I'm not a patient man. And neither are you, ladies. Just like any other mankind, you're not patient either. Wait, wait, wait. Watch, watch, watch. And so we find. And instead of being ballistic, he, 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 he does present them a question and say, well, you know, this is a, <laughs> this is not a good situation. Watch and pray. Very same directed, verse 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Now, the first was just watch while I go pray yonder. Now he understands a spiritual thing. He asks the physical thing again. Watch. And now he says, I want you to pray. I want you to pray for yourself. Pray that you don't enter into temptation. How often do you pray for yourself? I, I would say that's a neglected portion of prayer, don't you? I find me, I find it myself praying for the church, praying for my children, praying for my grandchildren, and very frequently leaving myself out. That ought not to be, especially the man of God. Who is, who is Jesus praying about here? He's praying for himself. Right? An entire hour, and we're fixing to see it's going to be actually three hours, Praying for himself. Now, was this for something? In one sense, I, I don't want to drink this cup. But what the real prayer was, I want to be in the will of God. If this cup cannot pass from me, let me drink of it. Now, we can do a lot of things and look good to a lot of men. <coughs> And not really be in the will of God. Yeah. I, I think he wanted not only to display his love and to drink it before that crowd, but he wanted to do it in the right spirit. He wanted to drink that sin cup and guzzle her down. That'd take a whole lot, would it not? He, he, he wanted to take it of it of the right spirit, not of just simple submission, but out of the love of his own people, doing it on their behalf, not doing it to display self, not doing it to gain favor with the Father, but doing it to rescue his people. That's what he wanted. And, and so he says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, the spirit, small as spirit, meaning the, the inward man indeed is willing your problem, but the flesh is weak. So if I'm another hindrance to prayer, it's this. That's why most of us couldn't say a 21-word prayer and wait for now. That's why Bella gets impatient with her one minute popcorn. When, when I was a kid, it took longer than that popcorn. Y'all remember uh, all these excluded? Shaking it on the stove, waiting for that first pop, and then shaking it harder so it wouldn't stick to the bottom. It was a long wait, wasn't it? See, effective prayer, the, big, the biggest component is a patient wait. A patient wait. And in that patient wait, and I would really believe this is what the Lord was struggling with, is just accepting the will of God. 
It's okay. Make me willing and excited to take this cup. Make me willing and excited to pastor eight people. Make me willing and excited about preaching the gospel to one. Make me willing and excited about drinking this cup. That's what he desired. Verse 42, And he, meaning Christ, went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thou will be done. He's cut her down to about 15 words. And then he waits another hour. If it can't go the other way, I want your will. Do you ever pray that with sincerity? I want your will. You think about the challenges in your life and desiring what God wants more than what you want. And, and, and not to, to expose anybody, but just situations that have occur, occurred in my life. Adam, Sarah, how long have you prayed, and I know you have, to accept the situation, with a, the situation with AJ just for what it is, and that's where God puts you. That's a hard thing to do. And it's a good example because that's your son. That, that, that is your own creation. But that's what God wants. We've got to pray that way, do we not? Yeah. I guarantee you if you pray that way, you'll get up satisfied. Now, if you get up and get mad because everything ain't normal, you never feel satisfied. You know, I would say on the flip side, you're going to get up mad. Why can't it be better? Why do I have to drink of this cup? You know what? That's the worst ineffective prayer that you'll ever have. Mm. What, did, what did Cain contribute to his prayer line. Not much. In fact, I believe he went right against the example of God. Blood for blood. You know what? I love a lot of fruits and vegetables. I don't like them all. But you know what? You know why you can take an apple right after the tree and just begin munching? because it don't have blood. Hmm. You know why you can't do that with hogs or, or, or cattle? Because it'll make you sick. You gotta go by God's example. You gotta go by God's example. An effective prayer may take three hours. It may take very little contribution on your part and a whole lot more listening than you talking. And, and, and so we find that the Lord Jesus Christ being the perfect in all things was the perfect example in here. So I'm assuming now of the next hour, he's listening 59 minutes and 58 seconds because this is a much shorter prayer than the first, waiting to hear from his own father. Now, my boys, a long time today, text me instead of calling. You know what the problem with texting is? First of all, I personally don't think it's much personal stuff in there, meaning I can't hear their inflection of voices, and if they don't put exclamation points, I don't know if they have a problem with me or not, right? <clears throat> but that is the mode of communication that a boy is using a whole lot. Now the problem is, this is where my phone rests very much of the time. My phone is always on mute, or the ringer is not on ever. Sorry, that's why you can't reach me. But, I miss the text. And then I, I, I get it out and maybe I'm going to do something like, man, Adam texted me. Six hours ago. And I often wondered, is Adam and Matthew waiting patiently? Oh, Dad eventually texts me back. 
He's probably busy at the nursing home. It'll be okay. No. Dad, where have you been? Right? And don't get down on Adam and Matthew. Because we do the exact same thing. Right? Waiting. Six hours, six months, six years to hear from the Almighty. The flesh, that's why he warned us about the flesh. We get mad and upset and angry waiting on the Lord. Waiting will be the most difficult thing as a Christian person that you'll ever do. But listen, if you, if you do it in the right way, you know what it grows? Patience. Third fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, love, joy, peace. No, I'm missing one. Uh, one. Patience takes a long time to build, don't you think? When I was young, I had almost no patience. But life taught me to have a little. And I would desire more. And, and so we find that the Lord Jesus gives them this recommendation, a warning, if you will. He goes before God and says a very short prayer, and he waits on his father, and he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Now, again, this time he's patient like many fathers. He doesn't browbeat them. He doesn't even wake them up this time. And he even marks this concerning the flesh. Their eyes were heavy. That just means they were really, really tired. He instituted the Lord's Supper, which we know, according to the Jewish rules, can't even begin. He took those elements from the old Passover, and he created the, the remembrance for the church age, and that couldn't even be done until sundown. Now, the sundown is in April, or excuse me, the Jewish feast was in our April or very close to it. You know what happens in there is the, is the uh, uh, spring equinox. And so in that time, the earliest the sun set was six. And then they had this party, and they enjoyed the party, and then he instituted the Lord's Supper at the end of that, and then they went to Gethsemane, and now it's probably along about midnight. I'd be slipping too. Listen, at 53 years old, I don't do midnight well anymore. <laughs> you know, we're coming up on the, the beginning of the new year, and I used to love watch night services. Preaching and singing and praying the old year out and the new year in. I don't know if I can handle it anymore. I hope somebody had some winged dingers to keep me awake. Right? So he didn't criticize them. Understanding the flesh, knowing what the flesh was about, he let them have their nap. But with that said, what did they not do? They did not watch. They did not pray. And because of that, in about 15 minutes, what's going to happen? They're going to enter in temptation, and they're going to fail miserably. Right? And so we find that many times effective prayer always comes with patience, always comes with waiting on the Lord, always comes by uh, following the directive of the Almighty. Then come a... Uh, and he left them and went again and prayed the third time, saying the same word. So very short prayer, more listening time than, uh, than praying. Then he cometh to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on, take thy rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So we don't know the amount of time from verse 45 from 46. Because at first he says... Sleep on, get you some rest. And then a minute later, I don't know how long, maybe another hour, it says rise. And so if he said sleep on, and then immediately says rise, I don't think that's how it was. I think there was another time gap. I don't know how long, maybe another hour, maybe a couple hours. And they woke up, 
and that is in bad shape. Peter, the one of the ones that was close to him, cut off the servant's ear, and the Lord reached up and restored it. The other one's tucked tail and run. You think that's effective prayer? I don't think so. What got in the way of their prayer? What was the hindrance? What was the problem? The flesh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <coughs> so I warn you about that. I warn you about waiting. And I warn, I warn you about this because it's going to hinder you. It's going to hinder you and you and me. Amen. Amen. And the result is ineffective prayer. Now, I'm at the end now. And again, I'll, I'll end with the way I began. Are you satisfied with your prayer life? I, I can't answer that. I will tell you this, if, you're, if this might help you, I'm woefully unsatisfied with mine. And I know my biggest issue is waiting. Saying 21 words and waiting an hour is not my strong suit, <clears throat> but it ought to be. That's my goal. You know, uh, I've told you this before, those two months back in the summer made me chomp at the bed at the day of retirement. And one of my goals, I don't know if I'll do it, because I know what I'm made of, <coughs> when I retire, is to give more time for prayer. To actually have an hour and just sit and listen. You need that.